The movie opens with a man named Beck narrating and mentioning the time when gods and men lived together in Egypt after the world's creation. He states that the gods were tall and had gold in their veins. They also could turn into a monster whenever needed. Beck states that they created the man, but they did not control man's fate because his emotions and decisions also play an important role in shaping his fate. Beck then leads us to the day of the coronation of Osiris's son Horus, the god of air. The movie proceeds to young Beck when he steals a dress for his wife, Zaya, who has a firm belief in gods and is getting ready for the coronation of her god Horus. Beck gifts the stolen dress to Zaya and gets sad, thinking that he has promised her a better life and luxuries, but he is failing to get everything for her. And then we see Horus, who has been very careless regarding his coronation and wakes up just at the time of the ceremony. As he gets in a pool to get a bath, Hather, the goddess of love, approaches and accompanies him into the pool. After that, when Horus proposes to Hather to be his queen and is about to kiss, Horus's servants arrive to inform him that his coronation ceremony has started. Following that, we see Osiris welcoming Nephthys, Thoth and other gods who present their gifts to Horus. After all, the guests arrive Osiris summons mankind. He picks up two pieces of jewelry from the gifts the men have given them and states that no matter what the size of their offering is, they will always be treated equally at the final gate and welcomed to the afterlife, which is his legacy and hopes that his son proves to be a better than him. Suddenly, Osiris's brother, Set, arrives and joins his family on such a great occasion. Set gifts Horus and Ram's horse, who killed many gods before getting killed by Set. The moment Horus uses the horn, Set's army overtakes everything and Set challenges his brother to a fight after giving him the spear their father gifted him. Osiris refuses to fight, but Set stabs him and reveals that he is here to be the real king, and now men will have to pay heavy gold to make their way to the afterlife. Osiris passed away, informing his son that his journey had just begun. Horus gets infuriated at the unfortunate demise of his father and attacks Set. The Set is a warrior of the desert and overpowers him. After that, they transform into monster forms, and when Horus is about to gain the upper hand on Set, Set's army blinds Horus by using the reflection from the golden plate on their shields. Set easily takes him down and gouges out his eyes. Before Set can kill Horus, Hather surrenders to Set, giving Horus a chance to live. Beck informs us that after that, many gods refused to join Set, but they ended up paying with their lives. In contrast, things were worst for men because most were enslaved to earn every penny to make their easy afterlife. The scene shifts to Zaya, who gets insulted by Ushru for not properly maintaining his office, and he leaves, warning her to send for pushing stones if she fails ahead. After Yushiru leaves, Beck meets Zaya, and when he informs her that he will get her out of there, Zaya worries about their families and friend and states that only Horus can save them. Zaya then shows Beck the leftovers of war being taken to Set's vault, where he has hidden Horus's eyes and requests Beck to steal them for her. Beck agrees when Zaya informs him that he is the only one who can do this. Zaya and Beck steal the plans to understand the vault structure, as Ushru has built the vault for Set. After they get the plans, Beck jumps into a cart of gold and makes his way inside the vault. Beck uses the map, dodges every trap, and finds only one eye there. As Beck returns to Zaya, Yushiru captures him and demands what he has stolen from the vault. Beck gives him a piece of gold, and when Ushru orders his men to kill Zaya and Beck, Beck uses Horus's eye and runs away with Zaya. Zaya gets happy that Beck has succeeded in his mission but sudden, Yushiru aims an arrow at his heart and kills her. Beck takes her dead body to meet Horus, who has become an alcoholic and asks Beck to leave if he is here to pray and asks whether he has the wine for him. Beck informs him that he has his eye but wants to bargain with him first. Horus gets infuriated thinking a mortal is trying to bargain with him and attacks Beck. On being asked about his reward, Beck denies gold and requests him to save his wife. Horus gets calm after listening to this and gets his eye back. Horus questions Beck about his second eye, but Beck tells him he succeeded in getting only one. Horus tries to save Zaya but fails and summons Anubis, who takes away Zaya's soul. After that, Beck claims to know the plans of Set's pyramid, and if he leads Horus inside, he will be able to kill him. Horus gets interested in this offer and mentions that if he becomes king after killing Set, he can help him bring Zaya back before she reaches the afterlife. On the other hand, 
Set prepares his army to attack Nephthys, who has turned against him and is his ex-wife. Meanwhile, Horus tells Beck that to stop Set, they will have to kill the desert first, so they climb to the top of a mountain to pray to Horus's grandfather, Ra, the god of the sun. As Horus prays, he returns his wings and flies to Ra's boat in space. Ra gets mad at Horus for bringing a mortal on his ship and orders him to hide Beck under the deck if he wants him alive. Horus informs Ra about what Set has done to his father and gets permission to fill his flask with the water of creation. Ra understands his plans and claims he wants to calm the desert, kill Set, and be the king as his father wanted to see him. At the same time, Set kills all allies of Nephthys and approaches her while she is inside her temple. Set questions her why she said yes to his proposal if she didn't like him, and Nephthys tells him that she thought of doing good things with him, but he turned evil. Nephthys attempts to fly away, but Set grabs her wings and cuts them off. Subsequently, Horus and Beck return to Egypt, and Ra takes back Horus's wings. Horus orders Beck to fetch water for him, and when Beck is filling the flask with water, Set's hunter catches him. When they investigate Horus's eye, Horus appears there, and the hunter throws Beck down the cliff. The hunters underestimate Horus, but he gains the upper hand and kills them all. After that, he finds that Beck is safe. The hunter returns to Set and informs him that Horus has defeated them with his single eye. Set gets mad at him and beheads him. The lady hunters standing there ask Set to let them hunt Horus down. After that, Set orders her to lead him to the dark world because, in the end, it will be the only world standing against him. Hather warns him not to mess with something he knows very little about, but Set forces her and gives this task to prove her loyalty to him. Hather leaves and watches Horus using her powers and learns that he is in the abandoned temple of his father. Unfortunately, Set catches her there and thanks her for revealing Horus's exact location. When Set attempts to attack her, Hather takes off her bracelet and travels to the desert through the dark, where demons try to kill her, but she succeeds in making her way out. She starts looking for Horus, who is seen looking and remembering the memories he has associated with the old temple of his father. Suddenly, they are attacked by Set's hunters, who are riding on their huge snakes, and Horus claims that he cannot survive their venom. Beck suggests him to run from there, and Beck decides to bait the hunters while Horus attacks the hunter, but the snake tries to overpower him. Horus asks Beck to lure the hunters for a bit longer, and they manage to get rid of one of the hunters by throwing her down the mountain. As the second hunter attempts to attack them, Hather appears and commands the snake to burn itself. The snake follows the command and the trio leaves the temple. Horus is infuriated at Hather for sleeping with his enemy, but Hather convinces him that she was forced to do it as Set is killing everyone in his way. Horus tells her that he will kill Set with Beck's help because he knows the plan to get inside his pyramid. The trio continues their journey to see Thoth while Hather and Horus get into an argument with each other. Eventually, they meet Thoth and Beck wonders to see Thoth's look alike everywhere. Before Horus can tell him anything, Thoth understands that he is here for his help regarding the riddle of the Sphinx. Finally, Thoth agrees to help, and they continue their journey ahead. On their way, Hather gets mad at Horus for lying and giving false hope to Beck about bringing Zaya back. Horus informs her that it is the only way to convince him to help as he is the only one to know the plans. After that, they reach outside Set's temple, and Beck passes the first trap easily and turns the wheel to open a door for his allies to get inside. After they enter the pyramid, they encounter Sphinx, who asks them a riddle. Thoth gives the right answer, after which Sphinx dies there, and as Horus and Hather advance to put the water of creation in the heart of the desert to calm it, they get trapped. Suddenly, Set appears there, takes out Thoth's mind, and leaves Horus and Hather to die inside the cage. When Beck tries to throw the water of creation, Set informs him that no one can bring back his lover and that Horus has lied to him. Set pours down the water from the flask and leaves when the pyramid degrades. Horus breaks the cage and safely comes out with Beck and Hather. Beck gets mad at Horus for believing him and mentions that the gods only care for themselves and that Horus did not listen to Zaya's prayers when she prayed to Horus to save Egypt. Hather feels bad for Beck and summons Anubis to hand over her bracelet to him so that Zaya may enter the afterlife. Horus tries to stop her, but she removes her bracelet and gets pulled back to the dark world. Anubis takes Beck with him and reaches the gates of justice, where it is Zaya's turn to present her riches to enter the afterlife. 
Beck and Anubis arrive there and accompany Zaya with Hather's bracelet. On the other hand, Set gathers all weapons of the gods he has murdered and makes them a part of his body to gain ultimate strength. After that, he meets his father, Ra, and asks him for honor as he has honored him, but Ra denies stating that if he had everything to be honored, he would not have murdered his brother and family. Set claims to reshape everything by replacing his father and being immortal. Ra understands his intentions, and when he tries to kill Set, Set survives his attack as he has the powers of many gods and throws his father into the water of creation. The scene shifts to the Gates of Justice, where Apophis attacks and Anubis asks Beck to return to Horus if he can save them. Zaya also asks Beck to return and give him another chance. Beck returns to Horus and tells him that Set has unleashed the chaos and they will have to stop him. When Beck is concerned about their journey on foot, Horus shows him Nephthys's ride, which takes them to their desired location. At the same, they spot Apophis, who has approached Egypt and is drinking Nile's water to end life. Horus mentions that Ra is still alive, but he needs his spear to save them, and they will have to bait Set. Horus and Beck find Ushru while praying and ask him to lead them to the roof of Set's pyramid, where he addresses Apophis. Ushru leads them inside, and after Horus leaves to use another way of fighting Set, Yushiru infuriates Beck, and they start fighting. Beck manages to gain the upper hand on Yushiru and kills him. On the other hand, Horus attacks Set, and the moment Set overpowers Horus and is about to kill Horus, Beck saves Horus and distracts Set. When Set attacks Beck, he steals Horus's other eye and passes it to Horus. Horus prefers saving Beck instead of his eye and jumps to hold Beck's hand. Suddenly Set arrives and throws them down, but luckily, Horus transforms and saves Beck. When asked, Horus informs Beck that his real purpose is to save his people, which is the main source of his power, and he is a fool to consider his eyes as the source of his powers. After Horus leaves to fight Set, we see that Beck has been injured. Horus fights with Set in the air and easily overpowers him after discovering his real strength. Set begs Horus to let him live as he gave him a chance, but Horus kills him, stating he is no fool to commit the same mistake. Horus returns to his grandfather and returns his spear, due to which Ra manages to stop Apophis before he can completely drink away the Nile. Horus returns to his people after Apophis leaves and gets his eye back. When Horus rushes to see Beck, he learns that Beck has already passed away due to his injury. Horus picks up his body and drops it where he has hidden Zaya. Horus is sad, looking at Beck and Zaya when Ra appears behind him and mentions that he owes Horus and has the right to demand anything in return for what he has done for Ra. Horus wishes for nothing other than Beck and Zaya's life, and Ra grants his wish. As Ra leaves, Beck wakes up, and Horus asks him to give Zaya a hand. Following that, Horus is crowned as the king by Thoth and other gods, and he informs mankind that during his reign, their generosity and kindness will be everything they need to pass into the afterlife, which is his legacy. In the next scene, Horus is standing alone and missing Hather, but Beck finds him and gives him Hather's bracelet requesting him to bring his love back. Horus leaves after giving Egypt in Beck's safe hands, and the movie ends here.